the face frames will be made using this hard maple. And this has already been surfaced on two sides, so I'll get started by breaking it down into rough length. The lumber that I'm working with has been surfaced on both sides and also on one edge. So I'll use this edge against the fence to start breaking these down into rough width. It's been a few days since I cut out all these parts to rough length and width, and now we're going to go over to the jointer and square up one edge and one face. I've got all my parts jointed on one edge now, so I'm going to go ahead and set up the table saw and take them down to their final width. All right, I've got all my parts down to width now. So now we're going to run everything through the planer to come down to final thickness. Now, like I said before, I want to maintain as much thickness as I can on these. So I'm going to take a really light pass, maybe a 64th to a 32nd of an inch, uh, just to skim a little bit off so that they're all the same thickness. And I've got pencil marks on everything, so I'll know when everything's been hit uh, the full length of the board. I've got a lot of parts to send through, I think 36 in total. So I'll go ahead and get the camera started fire up the planer and hopefully not knock anything over or uh, trip over anything in the process here. The last cut we need to make before we start any joinery is to cut all these parts to their final length. I've got a block set up for these parts here. These are going to be 36 inches long, so I'll push it against the block, and then as I make my cut, I'll be away from that block and there'll be some space between the, the workpiece and the fence so that there's no binding or jamming or anything like that that could cause a kickback. Got all my parts cut now, so we're going to move on to some joinery. And for that, we're going to be using these 3 8 inch dowels. These are two inches long, and we'll have two at each joint. And I've got my Jessam dowling jig set up over here, so I'll show you what I've got going on over there. All right, moving on to the styles now. I've got my jig reset for this operation and got everything set up. Um, I did a few tests and seemed fine. And then when I did this first style, um, it ended up misaligned a little bit. 
uh, the holes are a little too far towards the end uh, by you know a 64th or 32nd. So I just glued a couple of dowels in there and then when that dries I'll cut those off and re-grill them. Um, this is the second one I did and these holes line up perfectly with my rails. So we'll go ahead and get all of those drilled now. Got the dowel holes all drilled now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the dowels into all the styles and let those set up and then I'll come back to do the final assembly of the entire frame and by pre-gluing these in and letting those dry that will make the final assembly a lot less stressful. Right, I've got everything sanded, so now it's time to move on to the finishing process. I'm going to be using General Finish's water-based stain for this project. Um, I've actually got the graphite and whitewash. I started with just the straight graphite, which is this color here, which is a lot darker than we wanted. Um, started messing with some different mixtures. Uh, this is a two to one, two parts white to one part graphite. This one is three to one, this is four to one. And I think we've settled on the two to one mixture. So I've got a couple of syringes here so I can um, get a repeatable mixture. Um, so, you know, I don't have to mix up enough stain to do the whole project at once. I can mix it up in batches and be able to repeat the measurement with these syringes. Um, so with that, I'll go ahead and get uh, some mixed up and we'll get to staining. Okay, the first coat of stain has been applied. Went on really well. Uh, this is These are maple, so sometimes maple can be a little splotchy, but this covered real well. Uh, we'll let these dry, and then we'll come back and apply it one more time so we have a nice uniform color across all of the face frames. For my top coat, I've gone with uh, General Finish's High Performance Water Base and Satin. I've also added uh, about 15% of the extender in there just to give it a little more open time and help it kind of flow out a little better. So I've got that mixed up in the spray gun. So we'll go ahead and uh, get these sprayed. Because my tall cabinets are actually two pieces, I need to cover the side of the storage cabinet and one side of the pantry cabinet where it'll be exposed. Uh, so you won't see that gap and you won't see the pre-finished birch plywood. And I'm gonna do that using this quarter inch maple plywood. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down into two pieces and then I'm gonna get some stain on it, get it clear coated. And then I'll do the final uh, kind of 
subscribing to the wall and, and fitting once we start installing the cabinets. ready to start attaching the face frames and I'm going to use pocket holes for that. Um, all of the upper cabinets are the same height at 36 inches so I went ahead and just made this story stick and marked out where I want all my holes and that'll make it easy to quickly mark all those on the tall side and then we got another one here for the short sides to make it uh, quickly mark the lines and get the holes drilled. I've got this Craig pocket hole jig here um, and then I also for this project picked up this clamp that slides in here which this uh, should have bought this a long time ago because this makes it really quick to drill a hole and move on to the next one. face frames just using the pocket holes and it is a lot of screws but I'm not using any glue here and the reason for that is just in case I make a mistake and I need to take this frame back off um, I have the ability to do that if it's not glued on. Notice the pre-finished surface has been sanded off of this cabinet on the side and the reason for that is because once this is installed the big panels that I finished earlier um, will get glued onto here with some construction adhesive and some pin nails. And we'll actually finish this out to match the face frame. And then it'll also cover up the gap uh, where the top and the bottom cabinets come together. Because of the side panels going on here, it's really important that this reveal is the same across the whole length of this cabinet so that I don't have any spots where that panel is sticking out farther than the edge of this face frame. So what I've done is I've clamped the panels together with some of the shelves from the upper cabinets so that the panels are parallel. And I'm using one of my parallel clamps, I've got the head spun around to push the face frame open so that this reveal is the same, so if there any bow in this face frame gets taken out, and then I'll go ahead and get these screws put in, and then that should hold it straight. I'm working on attaching the face frames and installing these cabinets, and not surprisingly, the wall is not straight. So I've scribed this one with a slight angle at the bottom and I've clamped a scrap piece of plywood here as a straight edge and then I'll use a flush trim bit with my router to take that little bit off all the way up. Okay, with that scribe cut, I'll go ahead and touch up the stain on this edge and then that one will be ready to install.